this is a ransom payment of about $6 billion, so about a billion bucks per prisoner. And while we're all happy when anybody who's in a place like Evan Prison gets home to their families, no one can have any feeling but joy, think about the next person that'll be taken, right? The incentive system is now put in place. Five American citizens wrongfully imprisoned in Iran are now en route to the U.S. as part of the Cash for Prisoner Exchange. But Biden's decision to release $6 billion in frozen funds to Iran is getting major pushback, with critics calling it nothing but a ransom payment. Let's bring in Morgan Ortega, former State Department spokesperson and founder of Polaris National Security. Morgan, it's great to see you. It, it's always good to have American citizens who were wrongly detained back on American soil. But critics of this deal say that we may have opened ourselves up to more hostage taking. I think that's true. And we've talked about this a few times that we've been able to get Americans homes, and it sort of starts to become variations on a theme, right? You look at getting Brittany Griner out of Russia. Um, and I was critical of at the time, not that I didn't want Brittany mm -hmm. Griner home. Of course we do. But when you start making trades that are against the interest of the American people, it actually ups the ante and raises the ransom payment, so to speak, for future Americans. So if you look at these five Americans, uh, dual citizens that are coming home, it was it's a $6 billion payment. This is the largest. Uh, in U.S. history. An administration has never paid this much before to get American hostages home. And if you look at what the Biden administration said, uh, they said, well, we had to pay this in order to get Americans home. Well, John, that's just not true. In the Trump administration under Mike Pompeo's State Department, where I worked, we were able to get two Americans home out of Iran for zero dollars. That was Michael White and Ji Wei Wang. So it is possible to negotiate with the Iranians and not give away the funds. Okay, let's, let's break that down into two pieces. First of all, the payment, which John Kirby insists was not ransom. Listen to what he said during the briefing. It's not ransom. These aren't U.S. taxpayer dollars. And we haven't lifted a single one of our sanctions on Iran. Iran will be getting no sanctions relief. He says it's not ransom because it's not our money. But whether it's our money or whether it's Iran's money yeah. that has been frozen and held in abeyance, yeah. it's still cash that they didn't have before this deal. And they didn't have that cash. Uh, this was oil revenue that was in South Korea. They didn't have that money because it was frozen because of sanctions. So you can say, you can argue that I'm not lifting sanctions, and, and maybe you're not technically lifting them, but when you're not uh, actually uh, uh, executing the sanctions, enforcing the sanctions, which they haven't been doing, by the way, on Iran to the fullest extent, extent of the law. In the Trump administration, we had to call around the world. We had to get China, India, Russia, all of these countries not to purchase Iranian oil during the maximum economic pressure campaign. That's how we got this $6 billion mm -hmm. in South Korea uh, in, the first place, in the first place. So you could say it's not a ransom payment. You could say we're not lifting sanctions. But if you're not enforcing them and you're giving Iran, the world's leading state sponsor of terrorism, $6 billion, then we're just arguing semantics. All right. Now to part two of that, and that is whether or not we needed to pay them this money at all. Because in the briefing, our Jackie Heinrich said, well, wait a second, we exchanged Five Iranian hostage or five Iranian prisoners, yeah. two of which apparently don't want to leave the United States and go back yeah. to Iran. Why would you? Yeah, for the five Americans, why did we need to give them money at all? Here's what Kirby said. This is the deal that uh, we were able to strike to secure the release of five Americans. It would be great, wonderful, if we could just pick up the phone and call the mullahs and say, hey, we want our Americans back. Send them back on the next plane. But you and I both know that's not going to happen, particularly with Iran. It's the best deal we could get. This is what yeah. we had to do to get this deal. This is the world's greatest superpower. Why are we negotiating from such a position of weakness? Uh, listen, I know and respect John Kirby. He was former State Department spokesperson before me. I think everything he said right there is true. It's accurate. This is the best deal that the Biden administration can get. If you ask Robert O'Brien, who was our hostage negotiator before he became national security mm -hmm. advisor, if you ask Mike Pompeo, uh, they, were, are they great negotiators? Absolutely. But they were able to go in from a position of strength because of who backed them up in the White House. And so when you look at the negotiators that the Biden team has, they don't have that same kind of backing. They don't have that same credible threat of force. Remember, John Kerry said back when he was Secretary of State negotiating the JCPOA, he lamented that he didn't have the threat of force in the negotiations because he knew it made him weaker. One final thing I have to bring up, John. Americans, current and former administration officials, are still under daily threat of assassination attempts from this regime. We're talking about uh, Chairman uh, Milley. We're talking about Mike Pompeo. We're talking about many other, Brian Hook, others. Current and former administration officials are today 
with full details of security because this regime threatens to kill them on American soil. So I want to know from the administration, why was that not included? You're giving them $6 billion and you can't even get them to stop trying to assassinate former American and current senior American officials? Yeah. It, it's baffling, the whole, the whole thing. It's unprecedented. I, again, it's great to have the Americans back yeah. on American soil very shortly, but people wonder what cost to get to the end of this deal. Yeah. Morgan, it's great to see you. Good luck tonight, by the way. Thank you. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.